Hello. I'm going to show you uh, something that I'm doing for Inktober at the moment. Now I've done a much bigger piece which is like an A3 size. I'll go in. So I did this for a class. We'll just take that right out. So I did this for a class that I taught last night for a workshop uh, at Logan Women's Health and Wellbeing Workshop. I'm going to do this in real time because uh, my voiceover thing at the moment is a little bit off the wall and I can't really do voiceovers and speed things up. So in what is a bit of a departure from me, I usually do kind of sped up videos um, and voice over them so that you don't have to watch too long. But this is, because this is inky fun, you know, there'll be lots of stopping and starting while I let things dry. I've already got this really cute sketch in here and um, I really like my little furry Cheshire cat. Um, he's a little bit different to just a little bit. So just a little bit different to this one. But I'm going to do roughly the same sorts of techniques that I did for the first one. So a lot of this is about using inks. I'm doing this in a Strathmore 500 series hardbound journal that I do lots of kind of watercolour work in. I find that these books work incredibly well for um, water-based and sketching media. So... Um, I have started with a mess on this page, which I kind of do sometimes. I really like, and it's got white ink through it. But on this page, it's going to echo these sorts of colours, but in inks. So I'm just going to get started. So I'm going to use an Artist Spectrum ink, so an acrylic ink, but I will use an India ink. And I'm just going to pop it in here. So this is the same palette that I used for the larger one. I'll just pop that down in there and quite often with these I will use mop brushes so because I'm doing a smaller book I might clip that edge perfect now I'll just chuck these in I like um, picking clips that are not that much bigger than the page because they don't impact as much. So that's really nice and flat now. So something to bear in mind in uh, when you're working with inks. So I also have a smaller mop brush that I'm going to use. So I used a really big one when I was working on the first one and the idea is to kind of I like to just take a tiny amount of grey and make it so that I can see what I'm drawing so I'm going to draw something here and you may not be able to see it with the other painting I also used um, masking fluid so and then the whole idea is to extend um, the water out, make it really quite wet in those channels, and then we're just going to drop our ink in at various different places. And you can make it work for you in whatever way that you want. But the whole idea with ink is to drop it not to drag it and we don't paint it like uh, acrylics because you can overwork your paper so one of the reasons I use these they're like pottery brushes really and have a look how I've just got these organic shapes starting to happen with my background And I can increase those, increase the shapes if I want. This paper takes it quite well. I like to frame so you can see the works that I'm doing here. I like to kind of frame my big 
my paintings so I'm using the trees and stuff to frame making sure that they're really quite wet and so you need a good watercolor paper or a good you know minimum 300 GSS, GSM paper to kind of really make this work And one of the things I find when I channel this kind of stuff is that um, it doesn't necessarily go to all of the lines that I've done. And I get these kind of bloomy shapes. Which are really cool and I really like Tim Burton style branches. But there's a couple of different things that I'll show you in the way that we approach this. And there is a method to my madness, I must say. And always have lots of water in your, on your paper and in your brush. So these kind of mop brushes. See a classic watercolour mop brush. I'm just using one of these pottery brushes. It's because they're designed to be used with inks. They work really well. They go to this fine point and make sure that you've got water um, enough water that it hasn't immediately soaked in, so that you can allow the ink to spread where it wants to, and just keep dumping in. I just tend to focus on popping it in these areas here. And this is why sometimes we might let it move like that. And so you can see where I originally painted, but I don't have, you know, as much of a, a control over that background. And thereby, the outer edges, I kind of push into the background and that they're a form behind the form, which is an interesting concept. And this one here... So what I'm going to do here too is make it pretty dark next to where the tail is because the tail at this point is going to be quite light. I'm let it, gonna let it fold down through there and then I'm gonna sop up whatever's gone into the spine because although I don't mind some bleeding between if I've got drawings and I've got graphite and sketchy drawings there I like to bring them further down and so I've got all these periods of light these you know um, light and dark kind of areas and they will I can then go along with a normal watercolor brush and I can drop I can accentuate some areas a little bit more and just deepen that color although can you see that I haven't put anything directly around the cat all right because he's oh, the star and we want to push him forward but I want to make these kind of dreamy. And, and look, I'm not really stroking. I'll stroke along the edge and often I'll lift, have my um, paintbrush flat. So one of the tricks for doing ink is to have a bit of water in your paintbrush and then you, you go around and you let it flow in particular ways. And also you can let things, um, you can let this kind of thing just, uh, you, I've seen people spray. But I like this, this is not really controlled, but it's like semi-controlled. So now I'm doing a little bit of dry on dry there, but I will then add extra pigment into that. 
So you can see those forms have bloomed out kind of really organically, which is really awesome. So they're there, but they're not there. <clears throat> and before I go any further with this, I really have to let it dry. So I'm going to turn the camera off now and let it dry because one of the rules of thumb when you're working with anything to do with water media is that you don't necessarily want it all to blend in together. You may want that and if you do, great. But in this particular picture, I don't really want to. I want to put quite a few layers of inks on and with the cat and everything like that. Okay, so we're nice and dry and I've taken the clips off but you see that the ink has kind of bled through where the clips were so they worked really well, exactly the way that I was intending. You find that this paper can be quite conductive. Um, so what I'm also going to do here is I've got some graphite still on this branch that I haven't kind of really gotten rid of but it will kind of activate a bit when I add some ink to it. But I'm just going to kind of water it now that I have, you see, I'm just going to put in the boundaries because I'm not masking this puss off, the Cheshire Cat. And I want the ink to run uh, just in that channel. So I'm kind of dabbing that all the way along. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker, kind of on this edge. And even then, you see that I'm dabbing. You don't stroke this. I'm going to have to add a little bit more ink. You see this black acrylic ink, it actually doesn't dry black black. Not like India ink does. So I'm putting some undiluted in here because there's like a shadow here from the puss. So we kind of want to show that right up against the edge. But then I can let that, see I'm just pressing that down and I'll just draw that along and draw it along as well. So I can really make that black down at the bottom and put some distinction between this and what's in the background. What's in the background is that little bit more faded and what's here is not so faded. And you add some light and shade to what you're doing. So that'll give that a really nice kind of definition and it makes it brings it forward you can already see you brought it forward what's there already is lighter so some so we play around with doing that now I'm going to get one of these really fine brushes so I'm using a French fill zero and I'm going to do some dry work. So I'm going to start in and put some curly bits. And I'm not using a full pigment here. But some of our branches, I can always go over these as well. So I can add some more darkness into this. And part of this is like you see the shapes that are organically forming and you work with them you can add in some black to some areas of them and then just let that so I'm adding a little bit more now form and feature to some of these forms that I've created the other thing that I like to do with these, you can do as much or as few of these as you like. The other thing that I like to do with these is to then look at um, working more with these when I put my teal coat down. So my teal coat I work on <clears throat> 
and sometimes I will coat all of the grey and give it a teal hinge but other times I don't but before that dries I then like to do the same thing and then it bleeds out so we'll see that kind of later on but now I'm going to focus on the cat a little bit and I can do that with fine brushes so initially I'm going to go in and do some grey I'm not going to touch the eyes and I'm leaving the nose a little bit different here this is just a foundational coat and of course when you're working with inks it's really cool because you are able to just paint on top of them and they don't reactivate so that's one of the really really cool things about this whole thing so this is just like a foundational coat and I'm very quickly running out of pigment here So I'll have to make some more or use some of my paint water, <laughs> my ink water. And I'm going to keep the leg a little bit lighter to the edge. One of the things with this is that you can really build up the layers. A lot better. But of course you've got to wait for them to dry and that takes time. So I'm putting shadow layers here. And I've just got that foundational coat on. Leave the eyes white, the nose white, and the teeth particularly white. Um, and I then can go in and look at adding deeper elements of pigment just here let them come down a little bit and if you don't like the blooming that's happening like me just take it out and then you just blot it so sometimes I like really working on a damp coat because it just kind of flies everywhere and you get these cool tones happening that you can add to his stripes and it bleeds out a little bit you've just got to be careful that it doesn't bleed past the edge of the leg so it doesn't matter if it bleeds out as a part of these stripes or even under here because this is a really shadowed portion and I can just lay in some of that colour there like that and it will bleed out a little bit and down here as well where I've done some of that cross patching so Now I'm going to do a lot of the eyes and the face uh, hereafter with markers but I just wanted to show you that if you don't have water soluble markers that you can use inks for this entire thing. You just need some fine paint brushes and the right inks and patience. Patience is probably the most important. And I don't mind having that kind of scratchy look. That'll be kept. Make sure you don't encroach on the face. So make sure your paper's not too wet.
and you can let those little areas of shadow that you're putting in just really bleed well. So I'm not using lots of ink and I've got a damp brush here. And I'm not overworking it. I'm just letting the ink move where it wants to move and just putting some foundational shadow colours in. Okay, so I have a turquoise and this is teal, a Letraset Aqua Marker and I also have a Tombow and it's a 373. Uh, water soluble marker. I'm going to use these a bit. I'm going to lay the Tombow down first because it's lighter and greener. Uh, and I'm just going to put in areas of green. All this teal. And then you can do this with a water brush or I'm just going to use a brush here because I'm lazy. And then I'm just going to water activate this paper. The marker on the paper again. And bring just soften out those brush lines with an aqua brush you would be able to just continuously go but because I'm just using a, a normal brush and water I have to keep replenishing it And these are just foundational layers for colour. And also we're just going to lay some in to these areas here. In these really dark areas that we just had here to give them some really cool contrast. These are the darker ones, so and I'm going to use a slightly bigger brush for this. So what I find with the Letra set is that it's particularly juicy and I can just do this whole kind of a layer thing with it. And if you work into the brush, you usually lose your brush strokes. I'm working pretty fast here though, so sometimes my paint dries more or my ink, you know, my paintbrush and my, my inks that I'm using, they dry a little bit more. Now I'm keeping this leg just that little bit <clears throat> lighter. We want to give some contrast. Let's see how gentle we want some of the, those color transitions to be. So I like the gradual colors that are coming in here. And you just see I do an area at a time and I let that area organically kind of work. If you leave it too long you're going to have more set values and you won't get that lovely kind of gradual lovely transition. So I'm just starting here to by putting some top layers in the eyes. I'm going to go back to the small brush and I'm going to have it more damp than wet and I'm just going to scrub it out. And I'm going to gradually deepen this. It's 
sometimes with ink, sometimes with markers to get a really nice graded eye like this so you've got those eyes that go from something to nothing almost so here's where I'm going to just go in with some darker colour so I'm just going to put that darker colour in little pops around while this is still damp so because it's still a little bit damp it doesn't set and dry and it's easier to scrub but you've got to do that in a light motion very gentle I do it in a circle like a circular motion you can see just scrubbing the edges away and I'm starting to get a little bit of, you know, deeper colour there. So, I've also got this deeper green. So this is the 346. So that can go in here. And it's a slightly different green, so I'm going to add in a little bit of this with it. and just change it and that will impact how that goes around and we'll just drag a little bit of it out make sure you keep your dark away from your light so I'm bringing that face forward at the moment by using dark kind of pigments and I'm going to now show you a little bit of the teal I'm not going to use a lot of it that lovely turquoise in the, in the art spectrum scale but I'm just going to work here into the darker aspects of the see how it's kind of just that little bit brighter and I'm laying my brush down and then I'll wash it out and I'll move it around like that then I can go in and enhance something like this. So I've got the colour underneath and it does inform the value of the colour I'm putting over the top and just changes it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this to his eyes. So I'm just dotting it, dotting it dotting it, dotting it. Now I'll wash my brush out and leave some water in it and I'll just lay my brush flat, lay my brush flat so I've still got that white happening in the eyes and because this is damp I can go in again Now make my brush very dry damp and I'm just gently dragging that colour down, really gently dragging colour. So we're starting to build those eyes up really well. I'll just zoom in and I'll show you. So you can see those areas now, they're all kind of different colour bases and you can see how the slight different pigments come in and they work well together and depends how um, concentrated you want to make these things and say how I'm, I'm putting the pigment on the end of my brush but leaving the brush flat And just reinforming all these areas and making those color variations marry up. So you see how that is also influenced by the gray that's underneath. 
and the shadows come from here. So then I just rinse my brush out and I literally scrub down with a damp brush and get that really nice kind of transition again. The same here with this one. So nice and dark on the edge. Wash the brush out and I do this with it to just take the water out and then I just gradually scrub that edge out the dampness gives it enough to move the pigment around gently often a little bit dry and scratchy but that's a good thing so we can look at doing some pink or colors in the ears and I may not even have to water activate that kind of look good the way they are. <clears throat> so we now have to think about, we've got those teeth there but I need a little bit of darker pigment kind of underneath because we really want to make that smile really stand out but we don't want the grey overtaking. So again it's that light scrubbing motion that you can see. And just go over some of the teal. So then his teeth are looking much more whiter, much, much whiter. So I'm just adding some darker tones into the parts of the ears. You've got the green underneath and the slightly sketchiness of the pen. So I've used like a, a permanent water-based pen so I use the stay anywhere pen from Mikador quite often so it's a stay anywhere pen permanent pen it's like a an alcohol marker but you can also use something like a uniball eye and that's waterproof and fade proof the main thing to remember with all of these is that it's really important that you understand um, it's not waterproof and fade proof until it really dries so I'm just using the grey to go in and add some further depth here. And here. And again I'll go in with my brush and really work some of those pigments out. Sometimes I'll use a lot of water, sometimes I won't. It's got to depend on your judgment. Some are water activate and some I leave, like the ears I've left. And with the nose, I'll do the same thing. So I'll put it in in a really light pink and then I'm just going to pop in on this side a darker pink but not on the other side and I'm kind of wanting to you know increase the eyes up here has these parts that come out like that. So 
So now I'm going to do the same thing again and I'm just going to get a slightly damp brush here and really kind of just extend that colour around a little bit. I'm just adding a little bit of that grey pigment ink just down at the bottom at the junction here. And it just makes that nose stand out a little bit more. This is all a little bit subjective, like you you kind of want, you know. I'm just gonna come in in between those teal mark those teal banners there and Now I'm going to take the bigger one that's a bit damp, not have it really wet, but just extend those out a little bit. This is all about gentle, so you use like watercolour brushes for this kind of activity, and kind of a gentle. Now I'm going to clean the brush out and I'm just going to blend this area here. You can see starting to come alive. I'm letting this lighter go because I want it there. But I kind of want to keep it nice and light. We keep him a little bit darker at the top, I think. So now I'm using this. This is a really cheap like brush pen, but I find it works better when you dip the pen into water and then you just work on it and then you can just have these lovely kind of transitional colors which I can then because there's water bleed out a little bit more so I'm adding blue into that teal mix now and I'm just going to add the ink right under it because it can bleed down past that line of what's been dampened and we can work that down a little bit it's a little bit too much water blend those colors a little bit more and we're starting to get that really nice transitional color I'm just going to add in a little bit more here and again move it out so my paper is not getting drier it's you know I'm I'm using you know not allowing it to get really dry it's just kind of staying damp but I'm definitely putting in some additional colours there just to keep it darker. Again, you see me cleaning out my brush and just transitioning it. I think the blue would look really cool down here. I'm just going to put a tiny amount in there and then again just really bloom it out it's coming out nicely sometimes if you put too much water it just kind of puddles everywhere and it doesn't work as well as what you'd like but with these brushes particularly they work well onto a wet surface so 
we can really utilize that color grading even when our paper is a bit damp it just blooms out a little bit better so using a different suite of colors and not using them all the way along gives a a fabulous further distribution of color so I'm using it in some of these damp areas now and just gradually building that color so what I'm going to do is get a damp brush so I've pressed all the water out of that it's not dry and because the paper's already damp I'm just going to work that out a little bit more let it peel down a little bit more just blend into the edges so I have a little bit of blue thallo blue ink and I'm going to use the tiniest amount just to kind of enhance that Change that to blue. It's got that green undertone just in a few key areas. Maybe just add it into the top of the eye there. You can see we're starting to get some really cool depth for that. So I've got some black here, so I want to increase that black this part here I'm not going to do the inner eyeball yet I'll definitely put that in there and this just gives further depth so you haven't got just one layer of stuff going on, you've got a number of layers it helps to bring out ones that might have been lost with darker pigment okay looking good and I'm going to leave them there, I'm not going to reactivate them. I think I'm going to get this grey just pop that in there like that and that's kind of moving down to that extend that out a little bit that, out a little bit and they just bleed a little bit you know And this is the same grey that I used before, but now I'm just going to leave it with detail so that I've got a little bit more shadow coming under here. I'm quite happy with that. Now I've just got to let all of that dry. It's really quite wet. You can see that it's gone through the back. So it's really quite wet. So we need to let that dry and then I'll be back. Okay, so this lovely cat is dry, mainly dry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my spray bottle. I'm just going to spray around this area and I'm going to use some ink in the turquoise again. I'm going to use this lovely bloomy thing and I'm going to pop down there's some areas that I will go over and 
I'm going to leave it to bloom the way that it's blooming at the moment. You don't, you want to create a bit of a halo around the cat. So these beautiful shapes, you know, we keep them darker up in the top. Okay, so I ran out of memory space, but you can see how I ended up moving that. And I, I'll show you again down here. So I'm just going to get some water and do those edges nicely. you got to make sure that we don't go over puss. And then check in the light to make sure you got enough water in there at all. Then we start dropping our and we let it bloom and see where it what it does. Darker down the bottom and lighter at the top. <clears throat> and often I will take my trusty tissue and definitely do that at this stage. Okay, so when my page is damp, so I'm going to get my really fine brush out, dip it while it's still wet into the black and just bring some organic shapes that are going to, you know, not impact. Because they're blurry, they're going to add rather, they're taking or not taking they're not competing with anything in the background right <clears throat> and they're blurring nicely you can really see them taking shape here And I'm going to leave it at that because they will dry lighter and I've done it at the top here and you can see how they've dried grey. You can also at this point add further parts into the branch and this is dry so it's darker so I can add further elements into here and I like doing it with a dry brush because it kind of looks scratchier and the shadow that I put in from the Cheshire Cat looks more natural then. So again I'm using the um, my brush on the flat and you start to get a little bit of the if you do that dry brushing, you start to add some subtle texture elements to again make it look like wood. And it's all about dragging that over. And you can see like I'm really drying that brush out and dragging that. over and we've got some nice shadow here so we're 
add that over. And it just makes it look that little bit realistic. So I'll zoom in now and I'll show you. So you can really see some of the texture in that branch now. So those eyes need a little bit further, a little bit more depth as well. So now's the time when I'm just, you know, I'm going to use my lid and the ink that's in the lid. Now I'm just going to go in again and do that same kind of technique. But then I'm just going to quickly go in with a damp brush and blend that out blend that out but I'm liking that kind of slightly gritty look to that transition in the eyes now I think it looks that little bit paler and whiter from where I'm sitting like on the screen at the moment so I'm just mirroring a few areas with ink now I'm kind of liking how he's turning out. Yeah, kind of liking how he's turning out. You have to just see how ultimately uh, the page is working for you. So for me, that page is working really, really well. And I just really want to let it dry before I do too much else to it. And I think I may add some writing to it. I didn't in the original, but I probably will with this one. So I'm going to look up something that's really good from Alice in Wonderland or something that I think goes really well with that. This is an Inktober kind of thing that I did in one of my workshops. So I'm now kind of looking at the page as it's finished and I really like, I really like that. I often like to put writing into my pages. Don't go over your drawing with an eraser if the paper is still damp because you will definitely put a hole in your paper and rip where you maybe don't want to rip so I'm just looking for slightly any more pencil marks and I'm really happy with that I'm just gonna sign it now and sign it up here And there we go, the finished product. Yay! How cute is that? A couple of things I just want to point out to you. So we have the chiaroscuro effect here, where we have the lighter and the darker together. And notice that I've kept the tree light around here so that I don't take away from the focal point. So when we have a look at the composition of this page, we have up, in here, focal point, up and around and down and up, to the face and up and around and down 
and that's kind of what you want to do I left all these curly and very they're very bleedy have a look at how the bleedy they are compared to the crispness of what's here that pushes them backwards and pushes this forwards and overall I think there's some pretty reasonable composition that's going on there make sure you keep your lighter around the cat because we don't the cats is in the same palette as the background so to be able to make that cat stand out there's a light patch here for a reason and there's lighter patches here for a reason it's to really outline the, the Cheshire cat make sure that you if you're going to put your shadows on that you actually put your shadows in and that you have a sense of where the lights coming from but overall have fun have fun this is a really cute page to do and I really really enjoyed it enough to do another one so remember if you want to buy this big one look how big it is compared to that one so if you want to buy this big one this is 120 Australian dollars um, I'm, I can put it up for sale uh, on my website I just act, and I'm going to sell prints of it as well so there are the A3 prints glycy prints um, they will be $45 Australian and the A4 will be 30 okay so ciao for now I hope you enjoyed it I know it's been a long time since I've done a video and I've started a lot and I thought that I should have been doing that yesterday as I was doing the other one. But because I knew I had this original little drawing in here, I thought, well, I'll do that one as a video. Because often my students like to see um, a process on how I achieved this. Okay, so I haven't put his whiskers in. And I thought to myself, oh no, I haven't done it. So he has whiskers that come out like this. out there and he also has whiskers that come out and I'm going to use a, a sharpie marker and I tend to go over them a couple of times because that white ink doesn't always show and it's very it showed up better on my other one I might go over those again with pencil there we go so and then we've got the whiskers coming out of the Cheshire cat and he's just looking so cute so cute you can also lighten a few features up with pencil if you like soften that transition you can even add a little bit into here so that we can make it look like his tail it's slightly rounded you can give it a good you can even use a paper stump so you can use a paper stump to just blend that pencil in make it not look like pencil and then you've got the tail kind of looking like it's got more rounded features in it all right ciao for now thank you for viewing hope to see you again soon